46 seconds into flight. Chamber pressures continue to look good across all three R68 engines. The same propellant that's sending this rocket to orbit could one day be used to drastically increase the performance of artillery and tank cannons. CLGG stands for Combustion Light Gas Gun, and these cannons use a chemical propellant much like regular cannons, with the difference being that instead of a solid propellant, they use hydrogen and oxygen gas. This combination is both more powerful and efficient than regular solid propellants. Hydrogen has an extremely low molecular weight, and is incredibly powerful even on its own. Once combined with oxygen, hydrogen becomes even more efficient and potent. CLG guns are pretty unique when compared to other experimental cannon types. They have some pretty distinct pros and cons, whereas other cannon types pretty much all have the same failings. The first and most obvious benefit of CLG guns is their lethality. CLG guns are able to accelerate projectiles to velocities that are impossible to reach by normal tank cannons, and even other experimental cannon types. A 45mm CLG demonstrator was able to propel a projectile up to 7.2 km per second, whereas railguns accelerate projectiles up to around 4 km per second, and regular cannons cannot surpass about 1.8. There are two components to increasing lethality, increase the weight of the projectile, or increase the velocity. Increasing velocity is the better option, as it gives you more bang for your buck than increasing the weight, and allows you to store more ammunition overall. The second benefit of CLG guns is their greatly enhanced range, thanks to their insanely high velocity. Conventional artillery gun ranges max out at around 30 kilometers, with tank cannons usually having a maximum effective range of 4 kilometers. The max range of CLG guns is estimated to be in excess of 200 kilometers. Enhanced range is attractive for any gun, but is doubly so for artillery. The Navy has been looking into using CLG guns on ships specifically because of their great range. Typically, if you want that kind of range out of a gun, you need to assist the round with a rocket motor, such as the cancelled LRLAP program. Rocket-assisted ammunition is typically expensive, and can have issues with the initial acceleration damaging the rocket motor. The most attractive benefit of CLG guns is their low barrel temperature. Despite providing much higher muzzle velocity, CLG guns are actually as cool or cooler than even conventional cannons while firing. This means that CLG guns will likely have longer-lasting barrels, which is a huge benefit. CLG guns could also theoretically sustain higher rates of fire for longer. Infinite zoning is another plus. Conventional artillery uses multiple charge bags to get the intended trajectory, which is more flexible than using a single casing, but it isn't as flexible as it could be. With CLG guns, the amount of propellant can be adjusted by minute amounts, allowing for the exact intended trajectory to be achieved. Something that is entirely unique to CLG guns is that they allow for propellant to be manufactured on site. Since the propellant is simply oxygen and hydrogen, two very common chemical elements, you could use water electrolysis to produce them. Electrolysis is a fairly simple process, and the military already uses it to some degree, with submarines using electrolysis to produce oxygen for the crew. Being able to manufacture propellant as needed would help alleviate logistical burdens, and in the case of ships would allow them to carry more ammunition on board. CLG guns aren't without their downsides, however. For one, the propellant must be cryogenically frozen. Hydrogen and oxygen are kept in their frozen liquid form, which is significantly more dense. In order to keep the liquid from heating up and expanding, the tanks they are held in must be cooled cryogenically. This obviously makes storing the tanks in the combat vehicle much more difficult. Not only does there need to be room for all the equipment necessary to keep the propellant tanks in a stable condition, but if the tanks are compromised, it could be catastrophic. If the cooling somehow failed, the liquids would quickly turn to gas and expand rapidly, causing an explosion. This could be prevented by a system which vents the tanks when it detects an increase in temperature or pressure. Contractors working on CLG technology claim that, with the application of certain engineering practices, the gases can be made as safe to store as conventional propellant. An additional issue with storing liquid hydrogen is its ability to leak through minute pores, meaning that the tanks would have to be manufactured to a very high standard. Liquid oxygen also produces a number of issues. If the oxygen tank were to be ruptured or have a leak, it would present a very significant fire hazard, especially if contained inside a vehicle. When oxygen comes into contact with organic substances such as oil or grease, a fire can be started with something as small as a spark or mechanical shock. Clothing that has come into contact with liquid oxygen is also very quick to ignite. Another issue is that in order to get predictable and desirable results, the gases have to be ignited in a very specific way. There are multiple points of ignition that fire at different intervals in order to get the desired effect. If the gases aren't ignited properly, it can lead to discrepancies with muzzle velocity and accuracy. This added complexity would, of course, come with added cost and maintenance burdens. There's also the problem that, if something goes wrong during the firing process, and the round needs to be extracted, there's no easy way to do it. Extracting the round would compromise the seal, venting the gases into the fighting compartment. This issue could likely be solved fairly easily, but it does add to the overall complexity of the system. Due to all the equipment necessary to keep the gases cooled, 
the propellant would likely need to be stored in a second vehicle, as seen here. It's possible that some kind of articulated vehicle could be used with this setup, but it seems very unlikely that they would be used for direct combat, as the gas lines are exposed. CLG guns could only be applied to tanks if there is some way to simplify and miniaturize their systems. It would also be ideal if CLG technology could be adapted to be similar to conventional tank cannons. For example, what if the gases came packed like solid propellant, in a single-use cartridge, with the penetrator slash warhead also being a part of the round? These rounds would have to be manufactured to a very high standard, due to the aforementioned issue with hydrogen leaks. As far as history goes, the development of CLG guns goes all the way back to 1960. But it wasn't until 1994 that the Navy officially started their own CLGG program, with the aim being to greatly enhance the bombardment capability of their ships. A 45mm demonstrator was created in 1995, and conducted firing tests that same year. Some issues were encountered with the creation of pressure waves, leading to undesirable performance. But it was found that if an inert gas such as helium was introduced in a relatively high amount compared to the oxygen, that pressure waves were much easier to mitigate. The 45mm demonstrator used a swing breech mechanism that was tied to an autoloader. In 2007, a 155mm demonstrator was in the process of being created and tested, but the program seems to sort of just stagnate from there. I have a sneaking suspicion that the Navy's CLG gun program took a backseat to their development of railguns, likely due to the inherent dangers of using liquid hydrogen and oxygen. In terms of pros and cons, railguns and CLG guns seem to be roughly comparable. Railguns have issues with power and barrel life, whereas CLG guns have issues with safety. I bet that since the Navy knows the importance of proper damage control and firefighting, that liquid oxygen looks extremely unattractive to them. While CLG guns seem to be easier to implement than other experimental cannon types, their application is much more limited. The gas tanks simply take up too much space to be effective in a frontline combat vehicle, relegating CLG guns to use as ground artillery, ship artillery, and potentially missile defense. Small-scale CLG guns could potentially be used on lighter vehicles, but I highly doubt that they will ever be used on main battle tanks. There are simply much better options out there. If ETC guns could solve their barrel life issues, I bet that those are what tanks will use, with the artillery backing them up using CLG guns. That's about all I can think to say on the subject. If you guys thought the video was informative, leaving a like or comment would be greatly appreciated. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.